In this video, I'm going to be talking about the process of hearing. Each sense of the human body completes the basic process of transduction, which is the conversion of stimuli detected by receptor cells to electrical impulses that are then transported to the brain. When it comes to sound, the brain and the ear process compression waves, which are shock waves that compress the medium through which they pass. One way to think about compression waves is a slinky. If one were to jiggle a slinky, the energy that passes through it flows in a compressed manner, like a compression wave. A compression wave looks like this. One wave like it's equivalent to two compressions as shown in this diagram. The process of audition or hearing begins the pinna, the external and visible part of the ear which acts like a funnel to draw in sound and guide it to the auditory canal. At the end of the canal, the sound waves hit the tympanic membrane, also known as the eardrum, causing it to vibrate with the waves. The resulting vibrations are relayed into the middle ear through three tiny bones, the hammer or the malleus, the anvil or the incus, and the stirrups or the stapes. These three tiny bones are also known as the ossicles. From the ossicles, the information is moved to the cochlea, a snail-shaped liquid-filled tube in the inner ear. In the cochlea, there are about 16,000 hair cells, each of which holds a bundle of fibers known as a cilia on its tip. The, vi the vibrations from the ossicles cause the oval window or the membrane covering the opening of the cochlea to vibrate. This vibration disturbs the fluid inside the cochlea and the basilar membrane located in the cochlea causes the hairs in the hair cells to bend. This bending leads to a change in electrical potential within the cell. All of this triggers nerve impulses in the attached neurons which are sent to the thalamus. The thalamus is in charge of regulating sensory information. The thalamus then relays the information to the auditory nerve and then to the auditory cortex. The information from the auditory cortex is sent to the temporal lobe which is in charge of the higher order of thinking and the temporal lobe interprets the message. To put all this into perspective, if someone were to say the letter A, the sound would travel as a compression wave and enter the ear through the pinna. It would then travel through the auditory ear canal. It would hit the eardrum, causing it to vibrate with the waves. Those vibrations would move through the ossicles to the cochlea. The vibrations would cause the hair cells to bend, leading to a change in the electrical potential of the cell. This information is sent to the thalamus and then relayed to the auditory cortex and then finally sent to the temporal lobe, which interprets the code and thinks of the letter A. Although loudness is directly determined by the number of hair cells that are vibrating, two different theories exist regarding how the ear detects pitch. One theory, the place theory, says that different areas of the cochlea respond to different frequencies. Higher tones excite areas closest to the opening of the cochlea, and lower tones excite areas near the narrow tip of the cochlea at the opposite end. Pitch is therefore determined in part by the area of the cochlea firing the most frequently. On the other hand, the frequency theory says that whatever the pitch of a sound wave, nerve impulses of a corresponding frequency will be sent to the auditory nerve. However, the problem with this theory is that with high-pitched sounds, neurons cannot fire fast enough. To reach the necessary speed, the neurons work together in a sort of volley system in which different neurons fire in sequence, allowing us to detect very high-frequency sounds. Thank you for watching my video, and I hope you enjoyed it.